Hi, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of the Bellied Up podcast, the greatest podcast in history. If you discount all the other podcasts you think are better, we give you the greatest advice on all your Midwest questions. We buy, sell, and trade your items. And if you're uh, out there driving a, a big old semi, we ask you, Miles, what do we ask him? To watch out for deer. And also, where you at? What you home? Where you at? Damn it. Damn, Miles, we practice this. I know. I anyway, know. enough of the... I'm a little out of sorts, Charlie. You want to know why? <laughs> What's going on? Today is October 19th. Okay. And October 19th, 2013 was the uh, darkest day in my alma mater's football program history. Oh, no. Yep. Darkest day. In MSUM Dragon history was October 19th, 2013. Is it, I've noticed you've been a little down in the dumps today. I'm a little off, um, and that's because... What happened? We lost to Crookston, Minnesota. Oh, no, you didn't lose to Crookston. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, so... Who is it? Who uh, is this to Crookston? Sorry to anyone who lives in Crookston, but... They know. Traditionally, your football team... It's kind of trash, and uh, it was always should have been a shoe in win, and we lost to Crookston that day. Now the question I have, Miles, is how could you, as the leader of that team, <laughs> the quarterback, the fearless quarterback? Well, I wasn't the quarterback. What were you? I was utility player at this point. You were a tool. Yeah, so I I did play quarterback, but I did not throw the ball. I just ran it and ran my head into other humans. Oh, really? Yeah. You're so. like a linebacker quarterback. Correct. Of. Exactly. And uh, what is ironic, although it was the darkest day in our program's history, I did have two touchdowns, our only two touchdowns. Really? So, yeah, it wasn't. It's not so much the darkest day for me. No. Personally. You were like the sun on the darkest day. Yeah. I, in uh, the Alanis Morissette you know, song I, of this yeah, it was tragic battle. Yeah, isn't it ironic? Isn't it ironic? Don't you think? It's like sun. It's like scoring two touchdowns on the darkest day. Dun, dun. I, so I think it would be it's like sun on the darkest day. It's like scoring two touchdowns when no one else came to play. Yeah. There, there you go. go. Look at that. Now, our starting quarterback was hurt, um, so I didn't help. And then it was a mud bowl. Not making excuses, but. But you just made two. No. Um and oh, you got another excuse. What else? No, I was just gonna say that I did my best, but it wasn't enough that day. Clearly not. It's yeah. two touchdowns though. Yeah, Dude, I don't know if I had another game with two touchdowns. Plenty more with one touchdown though. So, well, you know, I like that you're looking at uh, at the bright side of the darkest day. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I like about you, Miles. And I'd like to think I was the bright and shining moment in that day. You were. <laughs> Not not only do I like that about you, Miles, but I like that you support your local bar. That's what we're period. doing today, Charlie. That's just what we're flick doing. Flick the hat. Yeah, a little. Are those bellied up hats? Uh, sure. Go to ouyoubetcha dot com. Yeah. Get a bellied up. Support your local bar hat. Nice, Charlie. You're wearing you a cool a, sweatshirt. You don't get a Thanks, cut Miles. of revenue on, on this one, though, Charlie. I don't. Well, That's well, not what you tried to do there. Do you want to see how? Tell them how cool my sweatshirt is. Oh, oh. It's That's what it says. That's what it says. Very creative, Charlie. It says, oh, Manitowoc Minute. Yeah, you can get ManitowocMinute.com. There you go. How long ago, Charlie, did you post the first Manitowoc Minute video? 2017 Miles. Would you think it? June of 2017. Six years ago. Over six, six years oh, six ago. Six and a half years ago, Miles. And then nothing was the same. Nothing was the same. You know, the brightest day of my life, though, Miles? It was probably a year and a half after that when I slid into your DMs and said, hey, you want to collaborate? Do you want to know that I thought about sliding your DMs before that, but I didn't want to be the first one to initiate? Do you know so. I had that same thought and finally got sick of it and just DM'd you? Yeah. You held out long enough. Yep. It sucks, and dude. here we are. Now we're married. <laughs> now, <laughs> we're in a very functional yeah, well, functional is a good word, Charlie. Fellow marriage. We got to get together every so often, exchange the kids. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, but here we are, Charlie. Darkest day, MSUM, Dragon football history. But the past I, is the past. But it Miles. was it was the cornerstone for the future. Is it what was. That day was. It's a wake up call. Yeah, I mean, because if you actually continued to think you had 
uh, football potential in your future, you might not have switched your mindset to whatever the hell it is we're doing here. Exactly. So maybe if that day doesn't happen and I end up in the NFL, I mean, then I don't know if we're here today. No, I don't know either. If I don't hurt my knee a game later. Oh, here it goes. uh, You know, more excuses. Pile them on. Yeah. If all those things didn't happen, then I'd probably be in the league and we wouldn't be here today, Charlie. Yeah, but you'd have a little bit more problems physically. That is true. Now I just have emotional and mental problems. Yeah, that's okay. But you know what, Miles? A little bit of lightness in this darkest day in history. We get to talk to our callers. Yes, we do. And we're bellied up to the bar and feeling good here at... uh, we're over here Scotty's. at Scotty's Bar. Sorry. Oh, you have a burp going? Yep. I thought you forgot the name of the bar, and nope. I realized, yo, he was just having some gastrointestinal yep. issues. So we're here at Scotty's Bar and Pizza. We actually got a pizza coming. So Hell yeah. We're going to take some collars, munch on some pizza, and uh, maybe shine a little light on this dark day. I think we should do that. Hello. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who's on the horn right now? Uh, Justin. Justin. Well, you are just in time to <laughs> talk to us here on the podcast. What's going on? Miles, you know. crack me up. Oh, jeez. Uh, not a lot. Um, <laughs> I'm in office. I finally got back to my office today. Where you were? Uh, but I did listen to the episode that got released today as well. Nice. Do you like it? <laughs> I was laughing my butt off. Good. Okay. Pretty good. That's what we like to hear. Where, where, so where do you work? Where are you calling him from? Give us the lay of the land. The lay of the land. Um, I'm from Juneau. Um, Alaska. Which would be just south of Fond du Lac. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> oh, Juneau, Wisconsin. That's that's not, yep, that's um, just a stone's throw from Waldo, Wisconsin, isn't it? No. Um, cool. We're just south of Fond du Lac. Uh, like directly south of Fond du Lac, but fun uh, fact: Juno has a strip club, which is right across from the courthouse. So, oh, that's Ju- an interesting fact for the town. Juno's got a strip club right across from the courthouse. Well, that that sounds exotic. Um, Just a bit. It makes things exciting here in town. I bet it does. What's the name of it? Uh, it used to be a silk, but now it's called Solomon. Solomon's. Yep. Solomon Strip Club. Inter- I always find the names of strip clubs are, are interesting, but Solomon sounds like some fellow named Solomon just wanted a, an exotic dance joint named after. I love how Charlie's acting like he hasn't been there before. Been there. <laughs> just south of Fond du Lac. I There's thought no he was, way you aren't you haven't been there. I thought he was talking about Juneau, Alaska, first and foremost. Yeah. Honestly, I wasn't sure. I didn't know there was a Juneau, Wisconsin until now. I, I'm ashamed to admit. So, no, I haven't been to Salmon. Well, Justin, why don't you belly up to the bar with us? Tell us what's going on. Well, guys, um, so I think my brother has a problem. He goes to way too many auctions. Uh Uh-oh. What, animal auctions? No, but we are dairy farmers. Um, Oh, you're dairy farmers. Good for you guys. We are dairy farmers, so we we do buy some cows at times, but... um, he goes to a lot of estate sales, you know, just old farm houses and that kind of stuff, buying up random junk. My brother does that, too, actually. He looks in the paper for the estate sales, and I've gone with him to one or two of them. <laughs> okay. Well, Charlie, it sounds like you guys should start a support group. I so, think uh, so. It sounds like you're worried about it. What, what are you worried about it? <laughs> well, he keeps on buying junk and bringing it to the farm where the farm already has enough junk that needs to get going. But um, the good part is he actually fixes some of it up and resells it on Facebook Marketplace all the time. And so he makes a quick buck. But um, it comes to a point where there's just almost too much around and he's kind of cluttering up my parents' house as well. Okay. So it sounds like your parents are a little bit fed up with it and they came to you to try and solve their problem. Is that correct? No, not well. I think my mom would agree. My dad kind of encourages it at times. I um, see. Well, so this my older don't brother. fall too far I, from the tree. I no, see. sure don't. Sure don't. The, no, I think it's a chronic issue in the family. 
The calf don't fall too far from the bull. Get it? Since they're dairy <laughs> farmers, smiles. Yep, I got it. Yeah, but it probably does fall far from the bull because, like, the bull's, like, probably studded yeah. in a, a, yeah, a he's, barn somewhere. He's already moved on. Yeah. <laughs> They're uh, polygamous species, those cows. So, okay. So you don't have enough space, and he just keeps buying stuff. What is kind of stuff is he buying? Is it cool? I So he buys beer signs and beer lights, which I like because he does find me some deals on them. So that's, that's the fine part with it, you know, finding some cool man cave stuff. And either though, even though, None of us have a man cave yet, but, um, you know, future reference stuff that can stockpile. Yeah, some benefits. But, um, What's the worst thing he's bought? Yeah. The, so the worst thing or the best thing? Worst thing. Worst thing. Uh, it's just a lot of, like, antique. You know, he likes buying stuff that has, like, the Juno logo on it, like, from old stores. And so, like, none of it really applies. And, like, he goes, he likes going to the Antique uh, Historical Society um, and kind of showing off what he has compared to what they have at the museum there. And it's just a lot of old, like, jugs and um, some old bikes that he's been fixing up here recently. He has, like, a lawnmower collection, too, that he's working on. Your brother sounds awesome, dude. This sounds so cool. Yeah. What's his <laughs> name? Uh, Jacob. Jacob, Jacob and Justin. Wow. Okay. Well, it, honestly, it doesn't sound like it's going to be that much of a problem if he just wasn't dumping it at your parents. Is that correct? Then he can kind of just be on his own. Is that is that the real issue here? Well, he should move out. I mean, that'd be a good thing for him to get off the farm. Um, <laughs> How old is he? Place, but, uh, he's 26. Okay. How he, old are he you? He works at the farm, though. <laughs> Um, he, he still helps with the farm. I mean, but he, he works at, uh, John Deere on the assembly line. So he makes good money. Okay. Wow. And he, uh, you know, and then do you live on the farm too, Justin? No, I, I just moved off the farm. I, I live just in town, you know, a little bit closer to the strip club now. <laughs> good for you, Justin. Now, would you be complaining about this if he was, instead of collecting old town signs, he was instead collecting old strip club signs. Sounds like you're a pretty big fan. <laughs> yeah, you brought it up twice now, Justin. We're on to your ass. Yeah, <laughs> I get that a lot. <laughs> it's not easy to get away from it because, you know, like I said, you, the bull, uh, I go bowling for league and it's just down the street from it. So it's just right in the corner of your eye every day. Yeah, they're sitting there tempting you. Um. You know, the issue with your brother, though, Justin, I'll tell you, if you don't want him at his old lawnmowers, you can't have him at his super cool bar signs. So you got to take the good with the bad with that, you know? And honestly, I'm not really seeing that much bad. Yeah. I don't. You're on a farm. You got space. Right. That's what a farm's for. I'm kind of on your brother's side yeah, right well, now, I mean, Justin. What is he supposed to do? Not go to these auctions and not get treasures like that? Yeah. The guy's a collector, Justin. He, he, yeah, he's a dumpster diver, too. So if there's any good junk at the dump, at the local dump, he'll pick stuff up from there as well. And you guys um, are laughing right now. Dump. You're saying he just is grabs junk. He grabs junk, junk, junk. And then one time he's going to pull that one item that's worth $100,000 that he can then flip at an auction. And then who's going to be laughing, Justin? Exactly. Justin, have you ever seen the Antiques Road, Road Show? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, he could be one of those guys. So why? It just takes one. Yeah, what is the real issue here, Justin? You're not giving yeah, us any examples. Else going on. What's there's... really going on? Are you jealous? What's going on? I'm not jealous of him collecting junk. He should open an antique store, to be honest. I mean, we should try to figure out how we should start an antique store because he'd have all the stuff ready to roll and he'd probably turn it buck quicker than just selling it on Facebook Marketplace. And I think I have an idea of where you probably want to put that antique store. Where in town are you thinking you maybe <laughs> want to do the antique store? Go ahead. Just a couple blocks down from the local, you know, uh, 
strip club. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I figured you were gonna say. Yeah, uh, maybe right next door. Yeah, I can't imagine. You that know, actually, maybe he's never been done, Charlie. Ass and antiques? No, yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there you got it. <laughs> If anything, this is your gateway to be able to invest in said strip club. You're already investing in the strip club, it sounds like. So what's going a step further and uh, build it on to the side of it and have an antiques and ass? First one ever. I'm more of a full tab investor, to be honest. But, Good for uh, you. Okay. I, I like the thinking. Maybe I- Maybe I should be an investor with my brother and get him to open that antique store just down the block. No, now that no. sounds <laughs> right next to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, though, there are buildings available. If the, you know. There, there is. Well, there then, is. Yeah, and then start getting the business with each other. But, you know, I will say at the outset of this business, you're already seeing the negatives in your brother. That might have some problems uh, down the road. Um, do you guys have other unresolved issues that maybe we are uh, butting up against here? Oh, you know, just the typical talking to the same women and that kind of stuff. You know, <laughs> oh, that no, 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 that's no. not typical. Hey, that's... I was tipping this stripper. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> She was gonna give me a dance, not you. What the heck? And he's like, I want a two for one deal. I'm a, I'm a uh, deal finder, you know. Let's see if they've actually ever gone to the club together. Have, Have you? you? I cannot say or cannot. Uh, you deny, just said it though. An t- apple- All see? right. Well, <laughs> let's hear. Let's dive deeper into talking to the same women. Tell us a story where that went bad. Yeah. What happened? Oh boy. Um. Wait till he listens to this podcast. Um, uh, so there's this one time, which I, I don't think he, he says he didn't care about it, but there's this time that a buddy tried to hook him up with a girl and she didn't show any interest in him, but then she showed interest in me. And then we started hanging out and he didn't like that and got all kind of butthurt it seemed about it. And he said he wasn't, but I think he was. Okay. So, okay. When, when was this? What was her name? I'm not going to get her name out. Um, okay. But uh, it was last year. Oh, you're a little close. I don't know. Maybe. Are you still with the gal? No. Okay. How long were you dating her? Uh, month-ish. What did, what did he say? Did he say, was there a direct confrontation there? Not really. He just kind of shook his head and... Um, kind of just make comments to other people on the side now okay i'm gonna put my i'm gonna walk a auction in your brother's shoes here there you go i like what you did there good play on words miles i'm gonna and i want you to think about this justin do you think maybe uh his auction loving dumpster diving self is maybe just something to keep his mind off the fact that his brother steals stole his girl do you think that maybe mm. he's using that as an outlet to bury some of the emotional trauma and pain that you've caused him? <laughs> I mean, that's that's plausible, very plausible. Um, uh, it's better than uh, drinking a bottle to it, I guess. So um, spending money on antiques is way better than that. So yeah, I could see it. It's when, either that or he blows all of his money at the strip club. So which one do you want? Yeah, for your brother. I mean, whatever. Both of them probably make him happy. So, And that's what it really comes down to. Is your brother happy doing all this antique work? I, I think so. It, it, like, I, I don't know why he wouldn't uh, be happy because he keeps on doing it. So um, it makes him some more money on the side. So, and I know my grandpa likes it too that he does it. Wow. It sounds like your dad likes it, your grandpa likes it, your brother likes it. The only people that don't like it is you and your mom. Yep, that sums it up. Okay. All right. Well, I think that you maybe got to throw him a bone. You stole his girl. Let him collect the antiques. Yeah. It's a give and take relationship. It really is. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. I mean, um, we both win eventually. 
<laughs> the, he sounds so despondent. This isn't that. What did you want us to say? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you're talking to one guy. I Okay. You know what? I'll give you an option here, Justin. Give us something that you want out of the farm. Buy, sell, and trade, baby. Let's yeah. get let's get it out of there. Let's yeah. solve your problems. Ooh, what if is? If I could sell my brother, I mean that. Oh, uh, you know, uh, just sounds like if he could sell you too. I think it's mutual. Yeah, what would Jacob think if he heard that right now? You know, he's gonna he be over there. Throws the, the first stone. Yeah, you know? first you steal his he gal, then you're trying to sell him. Ay ay ay. They, they all call me the milkman's son because they look different from my other brothers, so they all call me adopted anyway. Okay, oh, that's no. what this is about. Even more buried trauma. Back and audience. only you and your mom don't like it. Okay. So now we're starting to see the greater so picture here. you're telling here. me in judo there is a mailman who has OCD who doesn't like junk laying around is what you're telling me. <laughs> I mean, possibly. Okay. I just, uh, I, I think we're getting somewhere. You guys should be therapists instead of advice. Well, I mean, that's, that's what we're doing. Have you ever uh, asked your mom or <laughs> your dad? Yeah. No, no, I don't go down that path. We'll just, we'll just keep it under it's the rug. Classic, yet. don't okay. ask, don't tell situation. Yeah, Charlie, I but got it. I think this conversation is pretty telling. I am being told a lot here. So, Justin, listen, we've gotten to the root of the problem, I think. Now let's just start fixing the symptom, okay? What do you want out of that farm? Uh, just to be successful, um, keep it clean, oh, I guess, well, and uh, make the cows, make sure the cows are happy. No, and I appreciate that, Justin. I'm saying actual junk that your brother has brought to that sell? farm. What do you want to sell? What do you want to oh, trade? sell or trade? Oh. He doesn't want to trade. I, I can't. I'm not allowed to sell or trade anything there. I'm just uh, uh, cheap Mexican milk in there. But uh, the cheap um, what? Mexican. Hmm. Ah, wait. So, okay, Justin, if there's anything in the deal that you want to get out of there, just anything your brother has brought to that farm that you're like, why the hell do you have to bring this here? Let's put it on the auction block right now. Uh... I can't say it's lawnmowers because they actually look nice. Okay. Um, he's been he likes fixing up old ladders. That's current his currently his recent thing. Are you telling me Jacob um, likes to fix up ladders? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's isn't it ironic? Like old, old farm ladders. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. You should start a business called Jacob's Ladders. It can be right next to Solomon's, too. Yeah. Just <laughs> lean, lean those suckers right up next to Solomon's and start and selling them. And you could them. have Samson's watering hole next to that. <laughs> yeah. That's a little Bible joke for you, Justin. <laughs> Yeah, and all all the, I, I got it. Do all the do all the strippers at Solomon's have biblical names? You know, instead of having like the exotic stripper names, it's just like no, it's like Ruth and <laughs> and Sarah. Wait, is Solomon a? Uh, that's a biblical name. Are you thinking of Samson? Yeah, Solomon Bible. Yeah, King Solomon. No, oh, yeah, Solomon. King he Solomon. Was the wisest of them all. Oh wow, way to flex your Bible knowledge on me, Miles. Damn, my parents paid a lot of money for that education, Charlie. I gotta pop that book open a little bit more, <laughs> refresh my memory. Uh, Justin, the more we're talking about all this stuff, you're complaining about all oh, this full farm full of crap. You're not giving us one thing. And I like it, actually, because I think at the heart, you love your brother quite a bit. You don't want to sell Jacob's ladders because he loves those ladders. You don't want to sell the lawnmowers because they actually look pretty cool. It's sounding like your brother Jacob might be the golden child and you are the prodigal son. Could that be the, you just moved off the farm. He's still living at the farm. You know what I think to tie the whole Bible thing together? Justin, I think you walk back to that farm and I bet you I wouldn't be surprised if your, uh, your folks kill the prized calf for you. <laughs> you know what, Charlie, you're a genius. I don't care what Miles tells you, but ah. uh, um, I think you're. That's what's up, man. Thank you. Do you hear that, Miles? Wow. Genius. 
This has come from the guy who doesn't think that his brother's antiques are very cool, Charlie. Well, so. I've got a new uh, newfound uh, feeling about him. Well, Justin, it sounds like things are just going right at the farm, okay? So you walk your way back there, and as soon as they see you in the distance, think about how pissed Justin's going to be when, when your uh, folks say... Jacob. What? You said Justin. We're talking about Justin. Justin left the farm. Jacob's still on the farm. Justin's walking back to the farm. And as soon as they see him in the distance, uh, the, his folks are going to say, Jacob, go get the prize calf. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense yeah, now? I got it. You now. like the analogy? I do. I really <laughs> It's pretty do. good, dude. It lines up freaking awesome. Yeah. We're talking to the prodigal son. Yeah, we are. We All right. really are. All right, Justin. Uh, did you get anything out of this or no? Yes. Yeah. I got a good free therapy session, so I appreciate that and helping talk all my problems. Um, you guys keep on doing the good work. All right. all right. You too. You keep her moving. And if you ever see something at that farm you want, buy, sell, or trade, make sure you tweet us, okay? Oh, I will make sure it happens. I will try to get my brother to call in and see what he has to say back We would to me. love to get your brother's side of this story. Yep. Have him call in. Yep. Sounds good, guys. Otherwise, I hope you guys have fun sitting at the bar, and I'll have one later during bowling league tonight. Yeah. yeah. And um, remember, I'll you. remember, Justin, always tip your stripper. <laughs> <laughs> roll, <laughs> roll them straight, Justin. Good luck, pal. Sounds good to me, guys. Uh, take care. All right. All right you too. Good. Jealousy, I think, is what's so that's jealous, about. Oh dude. God, he's so jealous, golden child, got cool antiques, got cool ladders. I'd be jealous of him too, man. The yeah, guy's I'm getting jealous Jake. just talking about the it. Guy's name's Jacob. He's got antique ladders, dude. Think about that business, Jacob's ladders. I would sell like hotcakes. It sounds like there's a prophecy here somewhere. There is. Yeah. So, is. shout out to Jacob. And I, I like Justin. Justin's just I like them both. He's finding his way, but he's finding his way. Yeah. He'll be back. He will. Welcome to the Belly Up Podcast. Who are we chit chatting with now? Hey, boys. What's up? This is uh, Kason. Hey, Kason. What's going on? Uh, not a whole lot. You know, just, just kicking back, doing some, some school work right now. Where are you at school? Uh, Virginia Tech. Finished oh. my last year here. Good for you. College educator. What, you, what are you studying? Uh, physics. Okay. Wow, he's a smart one too, Miles. Okay, that is. Oh, I don't. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, I never took physics because I couldn't quite get there emotionally. So I think you're a smart fella. Um, I'm not so good with words, so I figured the, uh, the numbers were my space. There you go. Physics makes sense, you know. Uh, shape, right. speed, There's and rules. all that don't make as much sense. Well said. Rationale yes, wise. Well said, Miles. Well said. Um, why don't you belly up to the bar? What are you thinking about? What's going on? What's on your mind? You know, I I got some something that I'm working on that I, I really feel like you guys have the the right expertise for. Okay. So, I'm a big uh, big endurance sports guy, right? My, my mainly uh, mainly triathlon, you know, swim, bike, run, action. But um, wait, you think we have advice here, on that? Say that. I, let me cook. Wait, me cook. I, I cut you off. What did you say? In a couple of weeks, you're doing what? Uh, I'm doing my first marathon in a couple of weeks. Ah. So I was hoping you guys could uh, could help me. I usually finish up a race, and it's it's a little bit. It's maybe a half hour, hour or so, and I'm just starving. Okay. Right? And I was thinking you guys might be able to help me figure out, like, what is my ideal post-race meal? What, what am I eating? Okay, well, first of all, you came to the right spot if you're looking for r marathon advice, right, Charlie? Miles is a well-known marathon runner. How I many just run and run like Forrest Gump. How many have you completed, Miles? So I want to say I'm, I'm, I'm nearing three digits. Three digits yep. on the marathon. Yep. The, uh, well, I mean, those concrete guys. Don't yeah. surprise you. Yeah, I mean, you you wouldn't believe how many marathons uh, I've done at a bar, just drinking and drinking and all night long. So, I got a few marathons under my Dude, belt. Twenty six point two beers. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually. <laughs> did a, we just invented a, a new drinking challenge, Charlie? 
20, the, you know, they the have the, yeah, they have the 30 rack challenge to drink 30 beers in a day, but Hey, 26.2. And then you can get a sticker you just and get, then brag about it forever. I'm only doing a half beer marathon today. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, uh, no, boys, if, if I get one of those stickers and put it on my car, you guys got to personally come down to Virginia and, and beat, just punch me. Yeah. Beat the shit out of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we're all on the same page now. So, yeah, I would agree. He's all looking right, for right. a post-marathon meal, well, Miles. Well, but here's the thing. It seems like you're going from triathlons to marathons. I feel like it's kind of like playing in the big leagues and then going and playing triple ball. What do you need advice about that? Just hit a home run. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good about the race, right? But I, I've, I've been in it like I, I just got a half Ironman a couple of weeks ago, and uh, afterwards I, I I ate a taco twelve pack, you know, like where you get a taco belly, you get the family pack. Oh, yeah, I feel I just, bad. For I just your... one of those. That is a I I've also experienced that after one of my beer marathons, housing a twelve pack of tacos goes down pretty easy. Oof. Oh my god, yeah. it was it was a great experience for about. You guys are keeping the porcelain business alive and well. I'm just going to say that right now. <laughs> that is, I've never. Well, yeah, that's, that's the problem is in those. I've never had that much. I've you, never right? had that much Taco Bell in my life, dude. That's insane. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody's got to experience that one. Oh, I mean, yeah. It's... Doritos Locos Tacos. You've never had 12 in one sitting, Charlie? No. No, are you kidding me? Oh my god! No. Well, you're missing out. Miles, you gotta, you gotta help with that. If you run a marathon, drink twenty six point two beers, and have twelve tacos, yeah. that's a full day right there. Jimmy V said that in his speech. <laughs> 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 All right. So, honestly, it sounds like you know exactly what to do. I don't think we can offer you any well, advice. Well, no, he's wondering what meal he should have afterwards. Sounds Charlie. like he knows the 12 Taco Bell tacos. Good God. Oh, well, I'm, I'm saying that that didn't work out too great for me. Oh, oh no yeah. kidding. It didn't work out too <laughs> great for you. So, okay. I think what you need to do is think about, you know, you're running 26.2 miles, which is just dumb in itself. I, you just don't need to. We have cars now. It's not a good idea. Is yeah, it? we have. Yeah. we have cars. <laughs> what are you thinking? We also have bikes and motorcycle. We have everything now. We don't need to be running that far. Right, right, right. One, two. I think the real issue lies in that you need to start eating more during the race. You know how like they do those belts of water bottles. I think you need to have like a belt of. Oh rain, yeah, I got the. Uh, you need a belt of ranch I got the gels. Bottles. I got the goose. Well, I do a I do a Snickers bar sometimes when I get to that that midpoint where you're really in the uh, in struggle bus. Yeah, one bite of Snickers, one drink of ranch. One bite of Snickers, one drink of ranch. Got good fats in ranch as well. And then when you get to the end of the race, so you're, you're not thinking you're, like classic Hidden Valley. No, you're gonna want to go to your local salad bar wherever that is. Don't eat the salad. That's a mistake. Just go right to the ranch bucket. See if you can get a to-go cup, and then you're good to go. Forget That's- a to-go cup. Just get yourself, go in two turkey basters in your slacks, fill up both turkey basters, and then put those in your camel back. Mm-hmm. That's an idea. All right. All right. It's an idea. Are, right. you, are you a big ranch guy or no, since you're in uh, Virginia? Oh, it's, it's a guilty pleasure. So what would you do? Gotta, gotta have the ranch. What would you do if you were running your marathon, maybe mile sixteen? You came across one of those water stations, but instead it was me and Charlie standing there handing out cups of ranch. You think that go over well? As long as you got a pickle for me, wouldn't that? Oh, I'll bring you pickles. Oh yeah. Wait, what kind of pickled stuff are you looking for? Pickled herring, pickled, pickled eggs, oh, I, I, pickled northern I can't pike. Do, I can't do the pickled eggs, but. Pickled pickles. Uh, I had somebody in a uh, in a race hand a pickle off to me once when I was really hurting. Dude, yeah. that, that changed you. So if, if y'all are there with Ranch at mile 16, picking out two cups of that. Pickles are a game changer. They're, they get the salinity in there. It's basically like a liquid IV. Um, well, there is dill. Dude, I mean, you get all your electrolytes from that. Yeah. yeah. I got a question. If you gotta, What do you do if you got to go to the potty while you're running? The family show, man. 
What he it's a, he says it's a family show. Uh, it, well, I think the kids are wondering, dude. Is it, sometimes. A, is it a dumb and dumber? I, just, I mean, sometimes just they go, got porta potties for you, but, yeah. but uh, just go, man. Yeah, sometimes you got to find a little spot in the woods and just just hope nobody comes out. Oh, really? Okay, cool. Yeah. Do do the serious ones just let it fly? I don't I don't know so much about the runners, but I I know that there's um. You get into those like Ironman races when you got the real serious athletes out there, the pros, and that you, you don't want to touch their bike after that. Oh, oh. nasty! Why wouldn't they just wait till they're yeah. in the water? That's true. That'd be a well. You swim first. Oh yeah, you they probably are. They <laughs> As know you can that. tell, I don't know anything <laughs> about triathlons. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, Charlie, no, you have to pick. If you run in in an alternative universe, you are running a marathon. What is your post marathon meal you're choosing? I do uh, grilled peanut butter and jellies. <laughs> They're so good, dude. How many? Oh, uh, I do probably three of them. <laughs> and then get yourself some pickles, and then uh, have some beers, and I think you're you're good to go back to gravy, baby. Well, that actually is a great segue into what I would pick. I would pick uh, a steak. I would pick meatballs and gravy. Uh, maybe some corn. Maybe uh, some stuffing. Basically, Thanksgiving. I want to do it on Thanksgiving. If I'm, oh. gonna, if I, if yeah, someone, you're is, catching me with that Thanksgiving stuffing. Yeah. If someone is. Uh, making me run at all, it better be a turkey trot 5K so I can eat the turkey meal afterwards. But other than that, I don't think it's going to happen for me. What's the longest distance you've ever run at one point, Miles? Me? Yeah. Well, you got to remember, I was a wee young chap at some point. Um, probably, I don't know, three or four miles. Good for you, dude. Yeah. But I was... About a hundred pounds lighter than this. I did a five k once. How many miles is that? Three, three, three point five, maybe. Three point one ish. Three point one. Okay, Charlie, you need to get a sticker on the back of your truck that says three point one. You know what I should do? Uh, and so uh, twenty six point four, two point six. You know, just move the decimal. Yeah. And then make the decimal very small. Two point six four, yeah, like that. Yeah, or two point six two. I mean, what they don't tell you, what they don't tell you, you can just buy one of those stickers. Oh well, then let's just do that. Why don't you do that? Why are you? What, here's the real question, dude. Why do you feel the need to run a marathon, huh? Oh, dude, it's fun. Okay. You, you All right, we got that out of, out of the way. For a bit. You don't have to think. We got that. I mean, you we just, got that out of the way. What's the real you hit, reason? Like, mile ten. Yeah. Dude, you hit like mile ten, and it's like you're not thinking at all. Really? You get through like three hours, and you just like you glaze over, man. It's great. You're in the zone, huh? Is that the runner's high that I've heard so much yeah. about? I, I don't know. People always talk about the runner's high like some like big like oh crazy thing, but it's, it's I think it's just the runner's dumb. The runner's dumb. You just get a little dumb. Okay. Well, I'm gonna be honest okay. with you. This sounds like you can get the same feeling at a bar. <laughs> So Charlie and I are kind of living that right now. We're not thinking about a lot, We're getting a little bit dumber. I don't think it's too far off. Can you win a beer marathon and a regular marathon? Let's find out. Can you compare the high of that um, or the dumbness of running to something else? Does the beer equate? Is there anything else you've experienced that equates oh, to it? All I got to say is you feel a hell of a lot better the next morning after you run. Okay. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, I think he checked. And, and there. if you did a beer thon the night before, it's a great way to sweat it out. Yeah. Do you carbo cram with beer night before? No, but I, I used to know a guy that uh, that before every race, he'd do a couple shots the night before so to clear them out. Clear them out? Yeah. So, oh, okay. So, so like, uh, like opened his airways or something. Uh, uh, what's he taking shots of? Interesting. Wow. Well, I don't know. thanks for giving our audience advice on uh, how to run a marathon. I think uh, we have two listeners that are in the marathon. Well, Maybe one three. actually just dropped off, so we only have one left. <laughs> well, that's how that goes. Well, yeah, I, I I appreciate the advice on uh, the aftermath. I think I'm going to take you up on that uh, that steaks and 
So maybe some meatballs and gravy. I'm thinking maybe some potatoes too with that. What yeah, about the mashed grilled, potatoes gravy? What about the grilled PB and J, dude? I think that's the immediate. That's like yeah. I finished the race. I'm taking. I'm I'm getting that right at the finish line, right? That's what's up. You could do a Mitch burger and have a Snickers in your shoe. Ooh. That's you ever done the uh, peanut butter burger? Oh, yeah. A couple. Well, man, we appreciate you calling uh, in. Yeah, thanks for calling in. This was, uh, it sounds like you more so called in to tell us what to do, which is also fine, right, Charlie? That's fine. We take your advice, too, folks. We do. Miles and I are seriously considering. I feel like I learned something today, so I appreciate you guys. It's a win-win, symbiotic. You're the little bird in our crocodile teeth. All right, well, keep her moving, okay? (laughs) Yeah, I'll have a good one. You too. Have You're fun good. on your marathon. Watch out for deers. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. Yeah. Yes. Miles, that was a serious thing because I saw these kids doing this cross country running thing, and then a herd of deer come right through the herd of high schoolers. One of the deer <laughs> hits them right in the noggin, goes, knocks him on his ass. Do you think that he got to redo the race, or did he just play it as it lies? No. He just got a worse time. Ball is ball, dude. Ball yeah, is that ball. That's true. Ball don't lie. He's, he's got bragging rights, though. He does. I, a lot of people can say they hit a deer. Uh, Well, a lot of people can say a deer hit them, too. Sometimes deers run up and they hit the side of your car. It's like, dude, come on. <laughs> you know? Come on now. Yeah. You deserve that one. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Well, uh, was that three callers already? No. No. Wishful thinking. <laughs> All right. Let's take another caller. Let's take another caller. Miles, what are those faint noises I hear? Those, Charlie, are pheasants. Are they? Yes. Wow. You know what's better than going out and hunting pheasants? Uh, hunting pheasants that have been clearly drinking? That's what <laughs> those pheasants no, sound like. Uh, it's uh, hitting your limit and then heading back to the hunting shack. Uh-huh. Celebrate with a nice glass of tippy cow. Oh, that is a wonderful way to celebrate the old pheasant deal. There's just nothing better than that. Mm-mm. And you know what? I know we got the chocolate shake one out now, which is mm-hmm. delicious. But also, I will say for pheasant season, you can even get yourself an orange cream. That way, you know, people will know. Hey, yeah, it's hunting season. It's yeah. Hot. Don't shoot. Drink. You know, there you go. There you got it. I see. You found it. I found it. You didn't know where I was going with that for a while, but I was trying to help you out, but you found it. I found it. So guys, nothing more than a good celebratory tippy cow after you hit your limit. So cheers to that. Cheers to you. Tip it on back with tippy cow. Mm hmm. Nope. I was muted. Oh, (laughs) this is Stephanie. I'm the dog walker from Ben, Oregon, calling you back. Oh, Stephanie is back, Charlie. The dog walker from Bend, (laughs) Oregon. What's What's cooking? Uh Belly on up to the bar with us. Give us an update on whatever we talked about the last time. (laughs) Uh, Well, you gave me some advice on some above ground scuba diving to help uh, keep my job less monotonous, which I've been doing. There you go. Been, for, the, uh, for the folks that bird watching. Yep. For the folks that almost don't know bird yep. watching <laughs> above ground uh, scuba diving. Stephanie, you got it. I thought we were going to go an entire episode without bringing up bird watching, but here we are. Nope. So. Nope. Miles, the <laughs> birds fly again, baby. So go ahead, Charlie, ask her what she's been seeing out oh, there. Yeah, what's the, what's the sexiest bird you've seen out there, Stephanie? Tell me the details. Um, I saw a yellow-breasted uh, blackbird several times in that app, though, Merlin, that oh. you told me to download. <laughs> it won't let me log it for this region. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. I'm looking that up. Yellow-breasted, uh, what was black it? Blackbird. Breasted blackbird. I wonder if I've ever seen one mm-hmm. of them. Blackbird. So that's a pretty, yeah, we have... that's a pretty sexy bird. Oh, yeah, I've seen them. That is a sexy bird. Yeah, and then... We have a lot of those, and then the red winged blackbirds, a lot of those as well. Yeah, those are those, those are, are mean like bastards. Them red winged blackbirds are mean. <laughs> you watch those guys? Oh, they yeah, I'd stay away from them. Um, I always see them when I'm out paddle boarding on the river. Oh, look at you doing all those cool outdoor activities. Okay. So I know you should have come to Bend. I'm waiting. Oh, oh yeah. hey, <laughs> oh I'll, yeah. I'll be.
be the Now bed. I'm starting to remember a little more of this conversation. <laughs> so time out. You are telling me that Charlie ghosted you? <sighs> did she say that? <laughs> yeah. Wait, did I, oh. I wouldn't put those words in my mouth, but I was hoping that you would reach out to come visit. To come visit Bend, huh? Oh my gosh. Well, yeah. You know, what are we going to do in Bend? Well, we have hiking, paddleboarding, fishing. I actually learned how to fish last week. Oh, what'd you catch? Um, so I could do some advice on that. Nothing. <laughs> you caught nothing. Did you go? But I'm f- getting pretty good at casting. Nice. Fly fishing or spinner reel? Uh, spinner reel. Okay. Charlie, let's not get distracted here, all right? You message your booking <laughs> agent. I think you got to do a show in Bend, Oregon here coming up. Uh, and uh, I think you need to be more of a man of your word, you know? I'd like to think you pride yourself on that. And then, <laughs> you know, that was, uh, you never made it out that way. Well, I, you know, Miles, the tour, exactly. the, you know, Stephanie, the tour schedule just kind of, it gets to you, you know? You mm-hmm. got one date here, next date mm-hmm. there, you know? Bend, Oregon. You know how many uh, transfers I got to do from Milwaukee to get to Bend? Ay, 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 ay. I think there's a train that goes all the way out there, Charlie. You there. like riding the train? I took the train. So complicated. I took the train to Montana once. That was no 30 train. hours. Uh-huh. I'll never get back. Actually, I enjoyed it. It was kind of <laughs> nice. You ever take the train, Stephanie? I have taken the train um, from... I think it was from Bend to Seattle, actually. Yeah, it's I've been on the train a couple of times. Even when I was in Europe, I rode the train a lot. Nice. That's a nice it's Very ride. efficient over there. All right. So you're a little bit heartbroken. I understand. Charlie's left me heartbroken before yeah, as well. So get in line, Stephanie. Um, has there been any other updates on the dating front then? Um, no. I'm still in a not seen anyone but that's okay You're but not... i did have an overwhelming number of chow on my instagram oh nice yeah okay okay she had some people slide into the dms what what was the best dm slide <laughs> that you got um someone wrote almost like a job application cover letter essentially <laughs> explaining like themselves and who they are and why they think that we would be a good match. And I was like, that's actually not so bad, but they lived in like Indiana or something. And I was like, that's too far. (laughs) Did you respond to any or did anything, was there anyone that you were maybe thinking about meeting up with or it never got that far? Um, there was no one that I was close enough to meeting up with, unfortunately. Um, but I did have one person who we were, <laughs> he was actually in Bend and he didn't listen to the episode, but his friend did who lived in Utah and she like called him and told him to reach out to me. Um, so we almost hung out uh, one or two times, but our schedule slipped the line. Dang oh, it. Dang it. God. We need a bellied up matchmate. I know. Um, did you look at, did you look at his pictures on Instagram? Yeah, but they're all really old, so it's also kind of hard to tell, like, oh. what he looks like. So, well, did you have him send an updated pic or something? No, I feel a weird asking that personally. Uh, I know it's like totally normal, but <laughs> yeah, I get it. That's kind of an awkward thing to ask at first. Well, shout out your Instagram again. So, uh, I mean, we're not. He's like, no, I don't want that anymore. No, we're not settling until we figure this out. Give us the Instagram well, again. It sounds like she's not settling and holding out, Charlie. I'm just for the one. Uh, and I, I might be waiting for the one who is really funny and likes to do outdoor activities. Well, I'm married, so let's cool it on that. OK, <laughs> you know, but you could maybe meet up with Charlie. You know, that's very kind of you, Miles. Yeah, I mean, I could settle for that. Well, (laughs) I'm glad you could settle for that. But, you know, I'm all the way in Milwaukee. If Indiana is too far of a stone to throw, I mean, Milwaukee is pretty much the same distance, you know? Yeah, but we have a lot more in common. I mean, a couple episodes back, you talked about uh, Dancing Queen being a great karaoke song. That is my karaoke song. (laughs) Is it really? (laughs) Wait, it's your karaoke song? (laughs) Yes, like, and on multiple occasions, someone has handed me a tambourine 
while I've been singing that song. Wow. Can we hear it? <laughs> you know, you have to see it in uh, real life. Oh, teasing you uh, a little bit, huh, okay. Charlie? Not even okay. just a taste? Well, yeah. Not even just a taste. All right. All right. Well, I want to also warn you about Charlie's lifestyle. He's on the road a lot. He goes to a lot of bars. He drinks a lot. Um, you know, <laughs> he's always late. Um, so uh, are you really sure that you want to hold out for that? Or Yeah. I got more red flags than the Chinese consulate. So. <laughs> hey, that's okay. Everyone has different lifestyles. Wow. Okay, so even with all your faults, the long laundry list of red flags and faults, Charlie, man, she's still interested. Still interested. All right. Well, Stephanie, shout out the uh, IG. <laughs> Stephanie, he hates this so much. I can feel every <laughs> muscle in his body is tense right now. That's not true, Miles. I'm very loosey goosey right now. I'm in my zone. I'm just trying to, you know, uh, find Stephanie love on this place, knowing that, you know, <laughs> I, look, Stephanie, I'm I am not really a great catch. I'll tell you that. OK, I'm just OK. You know, I'm just not that great. OK, so but we're going to find <laughs> We're going to find you love. I'm telling you, we are. So okay. do you want to shout out the IG or no? Have you? <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's stew. So it's like S-T-E-S dot S-T-E-W. Dot S-T-E-W for folks listening at Steph dot stew. Okay. And uh, we'll tell you, yeah. um, you know, that there's been a lot going on in Steph's life recently. As soon as my Wi-Fi updates, you know. Well, as Charlie's. Oh, <laughs> wow. She's at Yellowstone recently. Check Grizzlies, that out. Grizzlies, geysers and bison. Oh, my. Oh, my. That's like lions and tigers and bears. <laughs> oh, my. That's fun. Did a little. That's is that right. where you did some fishing? Yeah. And that was what you called in for advice on, uh, right? Look at that. She saw this. Yeah, she saw I that want some right there. help fishing. Okay. okay. Well, well there's you... people next to us fishing, and they also used worm bait, and they were catching fish, and I didn't catch anything. And you just got a new tattoo as well. Is that the case? <laughs> <laughs> I did in June. Yeah. A panda. Is that a panda? Well, upside, it is a panda bear. Upside down panda what's with a party the, hat yeah, on. What's the meaning of the panda? Yep. <laughs> oh, you got it. You got it. So the panda, I got it with my friend. So her and I have the same birthday. We're born same day, same year. And we met Girl Scouts when we were 11. Oh. And so we got our favorite animals and, and like a little birthday hat on mine. And then like the number 13, because that's June 13th is our birthday. Oh. Just to like commemorate that. So that's... yeah, and I'm the panda of our group too. I'm like usually the first one to go to bed. So oh, nice. <laughs> I eat a lot. I'm more wise. Early to bed, early bird gets the worm. So that's fun. Now <laughs> there's, uh, is this uh, the bikini and the cowboy boots? What's the, uh, what was the inspiration there? The bikini and the cowboy boots. Oh, that was, was that my friend's bachelorette that party? That was so, that's not me, though. No, I know it's not you, but you put the picture on the deal. Oh, <laughs> she's the bride. Okay. Yeah. It's a bachelorette. Yeah, she's the bride. I see. Yeah, I mean, you... what do you think of bikinis and boots? Do you think that that's a good match? You think it's uh, maybe showing too much leg? What What do you feel about that? Are you asking me or Charlie? Well, both, I guess. I think this looks great. It's a vibe. It is a vibe. God, I can't yeah. believe not Charlie, one she person. Wants some advice on fishing. Oh yeah, what's the question on fishing? Sorry, I'm <laughs> I'm scrolling through the gram. I'm just trying. I'm catching up with you, Steph. We haven't talked in a few months. You know, I'm uh, I'm I'm just getting the lay of the land. So yeah. So uh, uh, where have you fished, and uh, what were you fishing for? Um. Well, I just fished when we were in. Island Park, Idaho, and I actually don't know the type of fish that were in the river by where we were staying, but that's where we were at. Probably some trout out there, you know, maybe some river chubs, you know. Uh, what do you? What advice are you mm -hmm. looking for? 
She wants to know how to catch them, probably. Like, how do I catch a fish? Oh, that's what I like. That, <laughs> that is the <laughs> fisher's anger right well, there. Charlie, I think it's really about technique, right? And I think you're going to need to do more of a hands-on approach. I think you're going to have to show her the technique in person. Do you? Maybe just like when you're teaching someone to shoot a pool stick. Oh, you yeah, know, I, I think see. you maybe need to go out there and show her the correct form. Yeah, you know, I would say, I see what you're getting to, Miles. You're a clever little bug, you know, you are. And I think <laughs> a little fly fishing would actually probably work good in those rivers out there. You got some great fly fishing out west, so I might even uh, encourage uh, that. You know, I just got into okay. fly fishing not too long ago, and it's a lot of fun. It's sort of its own uh, bird there. You know, it's its own unique situation, but you get a, a nice little four-weight fly rod. I bet you you get out there, get some of them trout. Um, you know, you can get that fly rod anywhere at your local sporting goods store. They sell them on the low end. You probably get a good rig set up for under a hundred bucks. You know, they get real high end and spendy there. If you want a stick, did you purchase a pole or were you just using someone else's? Miles, don't say God. Um, thing. I was actually from my dad's old fishing poles. Oh, you got your dad's old so, ones. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then what I would almost. So that's what I got. Yeah. What I would uh, get. Uh, actually, we got. You know what? Let's do this. We'll get your address and we'll send you a um, uh, a Grandpa Bob's uh, fishing tackle box, which we sell on mandwalkman.com. Ladies okay. and gentlemen, these are MEPS lures <laughs> made in Wisconsin, Anago, Wisconsin. Actually, if you're out there shooting squirrels, they will take your squirrel tails uh, that go as bucktails on those things. So uh, for all the squirrel hunters out there. And um, yeah, we'll send one over to you. And I recommend the Oprah, the Keeper Moving Spinner for those uh, little trouts. You know, there it's nice. I think it's a number. I forget the number on it, but the, the, those little spinners will do good in the river as well. Okay. Yeah. I trust you. You point me in the right direction. Yeah. And then, you know, if I get out to Bend, Oregon, we got to do a show out West at some point, <laughs> you know, we can, we can, you know, find ourselves a river, d dip, a, dip, a, our, throw our trebles in the lake, you know, that's a funny. There are words. plenty of lakes around these parts. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, there you have it, Steph. Lots of lakes to go fishing in, lots of rivers. Wow. And uh, in the meantime, are you still taking applications for your uh, honey, honey boo? Sure am. Sure am. I had most, I would say most of the people who reached out to me, I would like to just say thank you to you guys. Have a great audience. Everyone just said like, hi, and they wish me well on my dating life and my business. That's so awesome. I That's couldn't good. respond to all of them because I had like a hundred messages and I was like, That's too much for me to read through. Oh, well, wait, but wait, wait, wait. You didn't just, get most of it was. Did you did kind you, words. Did you at least look at all of them? I did look at all of them eventually, but it took me a while. Okay. Well, you're about to get <laughs> so I didn't a... respond to all of them because it was like hundreds. <laughs> so oh, it was like a little overwhelming. <laughs> Damn, that's awesome. <laughs> Well, you know yeah. what? Well, you got another batch coming your way. Yeah, okay? If you guys messaged her before and she Perfect. politely <laughs> declined, let's hold off on this round. This is the second round of uh, potential uh, mates that you may have coming your way. And guys, it sounds like you have to up your game. Even a cover letter on a resume didn't get the job done. So we're going to have to get a little more creative. <laughs> yeah, boys. fellas, send an updated photo with your yeah. DM slide. Don't go sliding without an updated photo. No, yes. no shirt. That's one thing I should advise. <laughs> I was going to have some advice to give people, too, if you're sliding into DMs. If your account is private, definitely send a photo because I'm not going to follow you just to see what you look like. Oh, oh wow. I yeah. There you <laughs> go. Yeah, that is uh, updated. And just dating in general. <laughs> yeah, dating in general, the the private account's not really uh, the way you want to do it. You're not trying to follow. You're uh -uh. not trying to up your follower count, you know, because then if it's awkward, then yeah. you got to unfollow and you don't want to do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, good luck on your second round of speed dating in the DMs. We are excited for you. Charlie will look to book a show in Bend, Oregon. And uh, it's good talking to you again. 
yeah, it's great talking to you guys too. Have a good rest of your day. Okay, you too. Watch out for deer stuff. I will. <laughs> All right. Bye bye now. Goodbye. Charlie, I think that we actually <sighs> could start our own dating app. We should. And the- we only and you have to listen to X amount of minutes of our podcast before you can create an account to show that you're actually a fan and we build our own little community of bellied up listeners that can then date each other. That would be awesome, dude. And then the first ones to get married, we could do the wedding. We could. You know, we we could we could do like uh and, but the groom has to wear a camo suit. For sure. <laughs> That's our only stipulation. That's it. That's and Charlie it. will pay for your guys' wedding. Uh yeah. Yeah, I will pay for two drinks. One for the bride, one for the groom. There we go. All right, Charlie. Well, that's another episode of the Belly It Up podcast. That about does it, folks. Thanks for hanging in there with us today. It was a lot of fun. And uh, we hope you're all doing real good out there. We really do. We wish you the best. And as always, Charlie, don't forget to tip your bartender. Love you guys.